In this video, I'm going to describe why we need three energy levels to produce lasing. So first of all, I'll describe what a laser is. A laser is a light source which has a collimated light beam, spectral purity, temporal coherence, and spatial coherence. So collimated light beam means that all the rays are parallel, spectral purity means that they are of the same wavelength, and temporal and spatial coherence I'll try and explain in the next slide. So let's say we have a photon traveling in this direction, and we know the phase of point A. Temporal coherence tells us that we can find the phase of B if we know the phase of A at any point in time. To define spatial coherence, let's have a wave and a wave front, and we have point A and point B on this wave front. For something to be perfectly spatially coherent, the phase relationship between A and B must stay the same at any time. As you may know, laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So how do we get this amplification? Well, here's my amplification medium. So let's say we have an excited atom of this medium, and it relaxes down and releases a photon. What we want is for that photon to cause the release of two photons, and for each of these two photons to cause the release of a secondary two photons. And for this to carry on through the whole medium, producing a huge amount of light. So where do we get this light from? Well, here's one of the atoms from the amplification medium, and it has electrons orbiting the nucleus. And here's an electron in the ground state. So if we increase the energy of this electron, so it goes to a higher energy level, and then it relaxes back down, it can produce a photon, which is what we're looking for. So here's an energy level diagram representing what I just said with for an atom with two energy levels for the electrons. So here's the ground state, or E1, and the second energy level as E2. And we have some resting electrons in the ground state. And what we want to do is give them some energy so they go to the excited state and then they come back down and give off a photon. Now this electron can either come down on its own by a spontaneous emission or can be caused to come down to ground state by another photon interacting with the atom, causing this electron to jump back down and releasing its photon at the same time. So you would end up with two photons traveling in the same direction and being completely coherent. So this is photon one coming in and one coming out and the second photon released by this electron jumping back down to ground state. Now let's say we have an elec excited electron in an atom in this amplification medium and it relaxes down and produces a photon of light. Now it's surrounded by a lot of atoms which are in a non-excited state so it's very likely that this photon is going to get absorbed. So we can see that we're going to need some sort of population inversion where we have more excited at atoms than we have atoms in ground state or non-excited. I'll try to explain this again with the aid of an energy diagram. This state of uh, excitation is not very stable. So the number of electrons in this state is very low compared to electrons in this state. And therefore it's very likely that any photon coming in is going to get absorbed to promote one of these ground state electrons to a higher energy state electron. Therefore, at best, the number of electrons at ground state and the number of electrons at the higher energy level can equal each other. With the two energy level system, we, we cannot create the population inversion required for lasing. Therefore, we use a three level energy system as shown here. We pump in some energy, and what that does is pumps an electron up to a higher energy state, E3, and that will undergo fast non radiative relaxation down to E2, which is a metastable state. That means that this state is longer lived than the other states we've talked about, and therefore we can create that population inversion required for lasing. If we talk about a four energy level system, just to clarify, if we have some electrons in the ground state and we give them some energy so they go up to energy level four, if they undergo a fast non-radiative relaxation to energy level three, which is metastable, we can see that we have time to invert the population. So we'll have more electrons in energy level three than we'll have in energy level one, which creates the possibility of amplification. 
a four energy level system also reduces the amount of light that is absorbed once it's released. So I'll try and explain that. Let's say we have an electron drop down from E3 to E2 and release a photon from this atom and we have another atom next to it which also has four energy levels. Because the transition from energy level 2 to energy level 1 is so fast, we have very few electrons in energy state 2. Therefore, even when this photon comes along and interacts with this second atom, it's very unlikely to get absorbed because there's hardly any electrons to absorb it. However, we have far more electrons in the metastable state up here, and therefore we're very likely to get stimulated emission of a second photon, like so. And therefore we'd have two coherent photons. 